You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another informative episode of Ask a Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob, and this is episode number 539, bringing you the controversial subjects that, <laughs> that you... And the YouTube comments. ...that you want to hear about. You know what? It's funny because we, out of 500 and now 39 episodes of Ask Drone You, I think I've maybe read the comments. Maybe I shouldn't admit this. On a few of them, we have people that look at them and make sure that we're addressing things that we need to address but we looked at one for a recent podcast and this was the podcast talking about what to do about illegal operators which bef- rob before you say anything number one illegal operators are rampant number two it pisses off every pilot who's gone out of their way to do it legally because like well why the hell am i going to do it if no one else is going to do it that's how right. they feel some guys were mad at me because they say that I'm using fear mongering and tactics to go after pilots who are unlicensed. And I'm going to I'm going to tell you something. Before 107, I had 30 open investigations against me from the FAA. Because of one guy in our town, his name is Luke, would call the FAA on me weekly because all the time I would take jobs away from him. All the time because he's a crappy pilot. And Sorry, just he is. Um, easy. Anyway. Easy. This this kind of gets us worked up. I'm just amazed. Well, that, when I say things like that, it gets other people worked up. But guys who are commenting on YouTube, come fly with me and it all makes sense. It all makes sense. I, I, I sh- there's To even talk about it is useless because, and even with my clients, I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to talk about how I fly. Come fly with me. Well, I, what gets me is, and we love hearing your comments and we do um, have, in, in some form or another, we pay attention to them, but the vitriol and... Just the, man, it is some, there's some nasty people out there. And And, it's funny because some of them are even like attorneys and then you look them up and like, yeah, you look them up and then it's like, uh, sir. Yeah, just, you know what? Tell us what you think. We want to hear about that, but be cool about it. I mean, come on. It, hey man, I, it's, this people is like, have a few drinks behind the keyboard. This is like getting and to me, and I wonder. I shouldn't get to you. I wonder would would this person, and I'm sure this is. Uh, there's more than one. I'm sure they're macho, and they'd say yes. But would they talk like this in front of us? Like that they were. If we were in a room together, I really doubt it. Think about that before you comment. And again, this is just going to make those same people just say f you, blah blah blah. <laughs> so I don't know why we're even talking about it. Um, We do talk about some controversial subjects and maybe even have some controversial perspectives. Well, I will say, though, in regards to the comments and what I was mentioning earlier, in regards to the whole, like, using fear-mongering, if you see an illegal operator. And guys, if you listen to that show, I say it time and time again, if the person looks to be doing something unsafe, yeah, then you go up and you say something to them. You ask them if they are licensed. You got to know if they're licensed or not, you know? And then the next thing is, let your quality speak for itself. If you see illegal operators out there, who cares? Which is something that has been said on this podcast for Time months. and time again, yes. The thing is, is that people take little snippets and then they're like, they run with it. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Anyways, keep doing your best to do things the right way. And I don't know, little speech from Pops over here. Well, just be respectful. I mean, come on, get stop the if, stinking internet courage. It what? makes me. That's <laughs> Rob gets really mad well, about get it. Get over yourself. <laughs> Seriously, it's not even your real name. Yeah. I mean, come on. Grow a pair. Seriously. <laughs> Gosh. Oh man, it's just hilarious, dude. Because uh, if someone has a good valid argument and they have a good valid point. One of the things that my dad taught me, uh, he was a lawyer, he said, as soon as you raise your voice, you lost the argument. Because it's it's emotionally charged, you're not delivering an objective opinion. And if you guys have a point out there, you think that we're not doing something right, we are all ears, all ears, all ears. As long as it's communicated respectfully. And some of you don't care whether it's whether we actually receive it you just want to be heard cussing but there's something too to be said about this because like for those people that write their opinions like that that vent that way 
ultimately it's only affecting them because with that mindset that they have, they will never be successful. Yeah. And something I learned from Warren Buffett in one of his first books is that you first must learn how to serve others before you ever serve yourself if you want to be successful. And for someone like that guy who's uh, writing all these comments and whatnot, that attitude, man, is n if you want to be successful, if you want to be truly free, if you want to get out of the nine to five, if you want to travel, if you want to have money to have experiences and meet new people and create memories and experiences, or maybe you're all about the consumerism and you want to buy a new car every year, whatever it is for you, whatever it is, I don't think you're going to get there with that attitude. It's just like if you get pulled over, you know, like we were working with the state police last week and they were like, I was joking about being pulled over by state police. And he goes, he goes, they were probably nice to you because you were probably nice to them. He's like, there's always the attitude ticket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I bet some of these folks have had a few of those. <laughs> Well, it's just like, you know, know, a lot of people don't understand that compassion breeds compassion. And I'm sorry if I sound overly confident sometimes. Uh, I, I really am I, because I'm not trying to sound overly confident. I'm just very passionate about this. You know, I went to college five years ago on this thing before there were really ever degrees, uh, you know, and flying all the time. I think the experience is really, you know, what gives the authority and credibility. Um, and I wouldn't still be getting clients and the, you know these guys that write these comments and they're like well his business must be failing I own three businesses and this one's doing great mm -hmm. and the other ones are doing even better so you know for these guys who write these things and make these opinions if you want to make a good point make a good point back it up with facts let us know what you think and why it's important going off on a rage and a tangent is just going to get you booted so, and you know what? 540 episodes deep and we're really dealing with this for the first time. So, you know, there are internet haters out there. Everyone has an opinion. Which Compa we want. Compassion breeds compassion. Yeah. Compassion breeds compassion. Being grateful and being nice to people, you will be so blown away. So blown away at how far that gets you in life. So yeah, anyway, let's these, stop talking about these this. These people get me down. I can't let it happen. Don't let All it right. get you down there, bud. I, it's you got to let that stuff roll I off know. your dome <laughs> like a nice oil on that bald head. Which should be really easy. Yes. Right. No obstacles. Just free <laughs> flow. We actually do have a question today. Well, that's stellar. And yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Definitely appreciate it. Um, if you have a question, ask You know where to find us. If you have a nice comment too, go on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, beware. Oh, they're funny, man. You can't let them get to you. Got to take it with a grain of salt. Indeed, that's that's true. All right, let's just listen to this question. Hello, Drone You. I am Eric. I have a YouTube channel, Eric74Gaming, and I am inspired by all your drone business videos, and I am saving money to start with my own business right now. My question is, what would you recommend for me to get? A DJI Inspire 1 with the X3 camera and later on upgrade to the X5 or X5R? Or build a DJI S1000 Plus and with that get a Sony A7 or a Sony A7S Mark II camera for the superior load light quality? Or is there anything else or other you would suggest or recommend? Also, I am not a great pilot i am just a beginner and have flown other people's drones but have never owned one thank you for your time and hope you can put me on the right direction to start a drone business first of all thank you for your question if you have a question go to askdrone.com uh just want to say thank you for the question but if you haven't flown a lot do not buy a hexacopter do not do not buy an s1000 uh it'll very quickly become overwhelming and you'll have to deal with problems you normally wouldn't have to deal with on smaller quadcopters. I believe it's best to learn on the smallest drones first and then move your way up. And you should learn on a drone that is not uh, gyroscopically stabilized. So, you know, if you get a little Sima, it's why we recommend the Sima to someone. Fly that around. Get used to it. Crash Maybe, it a lot. Crash it a lot. Maybe then move up to the quadcopter or Phantom and Inspire if you're really really confident about your flying capability. Um, 
I would say also just based on convenience and ease of use, you're going to find you'll get a lot more jobs with the Inspire than the S1000. The S1000 jobs are going to be really higher level jobs for more established businesses. And uh, I think you'll find that even with production jobs, the Inspire one is definitely going to be your go-to bird. Even with major production companies today, the ones that I'm being called on, most people are just flying the X5R. The Inspire 1 X5R. A lot of people are not flying the Inspire 2 on set for one simple reason. The fact that you have to pay for licensing to actually get the files out of the X5S camera. And a lot of production companies are not going to pay that extra charge to get just a little bit more color grading uh, ability. Hmm. Also, I'm hearing that the color is very difficult to match to other cameras on the X5S. So every What's the t- sensor in that? Um, it's a micro four thirds, 20 megapixel um, sensor, and it shoots uh, 5.2K at 30 frames, 4, 4K 60. So it's a really cool camera. But when you can shoot 4K 60 on a 20 megapixel Phantom 4, and most people can't even tell the difference, yeah. So gotcha. okay. the thing is, though, those cameras are great for stylistic shots, like super... Um, to really t- to create tones and colors to give an emotional sense. I, I give the example of if you've ever seen Mad Max Fury Road mm-hmm. and like kind of in the middle of the movie, the main female character, Charlize Theron, is staring out on the desert after they've like crashed their 18 wheeler. And you noticed the color, how everything is just super blue. Like that was shot in raw. And then they took the blues and just blew them up and really took the saturation down on all the other colors. I am not a colorist. Don't come to me for colorist questions. That's not my forte. Um, that being said, these these more expensive cameras provide the opportunity to really get different styles, different qualities, um, and much more advanced features. And the whole idea behind that is to be able to play with the footage more in post. Interesting. Uh, but th- what I'm seeing on set, and uh, I've gotten three calls in the last month to go on set, same thing over and over. Inspire One, Inspire One, Inspire One. They're very, very happy and content with the Inspire mm-hmm. One and the cameras that go along with that. You know, yeah. it's interesting because one of the ways that I see the S1000 being used really, really well is when it's being photographed. Yeah. They look really cool <laughs> in, the, in the images. Not that they're not good drones and, and, and have great uses for them, obviously, but I don't want to think. I think like just seeing that beast in mm. a picture actually looks really cool. But anyways... So what you're saying to him is practice, practice, practice. He said he's flown other people's drones, but maybe maybe even get a Phantom 3. Phantom 3 is what, 400 bucks now? Get a Phantom 3. Fly it around. Get used to it. Get used to orientation issues. Get used to flying FPV versus LOS. Like there are so many different things, and that's why I think our classes are so... uh, are so valuable. Yeah, so. And, and no offense to the the older guys, I'm one of them, but Eric sounds younger, and they sort of the digital. I don't know if he's a, a millennial or a digital native, probably a millennial, but just more. They kind of pick some of these things up a little bit faster because of video games and so yeah, forth. Yeah, if you are a video gamer and you're used to using your thumbs that way, you're going to pick this up very quickly. Yeah, so. definitely. Anyway, I hope that answers the question. If you have a question, go to askadroneu.com. But that's going to do it for us today. We kept the ads short for the people who asked for it. So thank you very much, because we do listen. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You.